Okay, so our final step is to uh, deploy the app, right? So I'm going to show you two ways to do this. Um, the first is um, something called the Xervo. Um, it's really simple to do. Um, all you do is sign up, log in, and you take your directory and you zip it, right? You compress it into a zip file and then you just upload it and they'll automatically uh, push your application online and give you a working URL. It's very simple to do. Um, the only downside is that it is a paid um, service. It starts off free, so you get a trial. I don't know off the top of my head how long the trial is, but um, it's that's the only downside. Um, so if you want to go that route, um, you can go ahead and do that. I'm not going to show that in the video because it's really easy to do. There's no need to create a tutorial on that. Um, the other way that we're going to do it is using something called Heroku. Um, it's really popular right now um, for deploying Node.js apps. Um, okay, and so what you'll need in addition to that is GitHub, and you'll also need Git. Um, so go ahead and search download Git, unless you have that already, you should if you're working with code. So go ahead and download that, and then also download the Heroku um, the Heroku client. So if you just search download Heroku and click that first link there, you can go ahead and download that. Now it's very important if you're downloading this for the first time, uh, Heroku and Git, make sure you close your command prompt if you have it open right now, or your terminal. Uh, close it because what's going to happen is once you install this um, it's going to attach it to your path if you're in Windows or whatever operating system so that you can use it in your console um, okay so go ahead and download that and once you're done go ahead and search Heroku getting started um, and then click on that first one there right and so it gives you a guide on how to deploy apps um, for each programming language, right? So we're gonna do Node.js um, uh, framework, not language. So we're gonna do Node.js. Okay. Um, so before we get started on it, um, you want to go to your console and you want to make sure that Heroku installed properly. Um, so just type in Heroku dash dash version, and then also do the same with Git. All right, so that's how you verify that both were installed. So once you have um, both of those installed and you've created a Heroku account and Git account, uh, I'm sorry, GitHub account, you want to log in to both of those, right? So the way you do that, with Heroku first, just type in Heroku login, and it's gonna ask you for your credentials. All right, pretty straightforward. Okay, then next to configure your GitHub, um, all you do is type in git config dash dash global and then user.name. And this is going to be your username on your GitHub page. And then do the same thing um, except user.name. It'll be email. And then you don't need quotations for the second part. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clear that. We're ready to move on. Okay, so next we just have to create the git repository, and you can do this by typing in git init. Um, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to use the git G GUI that comes um, with the git download, so I'm going to hit create new repository. And once I've navigated to my folder, I'm just going to hit select folder, create. Okay, so I like to use this because it's a little bit easier to use. You don't have to remember all the git commands and all that. Okay. This section right here contains all your files in your directory. Okay. And anytime you change a file, it's going to get added here. Okay. And so what you want to do is go up to commit and hit stage change files to commit. And what that's going to do is it's going to take all those files and commit it to the repository so then you can post it online. Okay, It's going to take a while depending on the size of your application. You'll see the status down here at the bottom. Okay, You may get an error like this if you're working on Windows. Just hit unlock index. Okay, so now you're ready to commit this repository. So what we need to do is go back over to GitHub and create this actual repository. So hit new repository on your home page, right? Just github.com, click new repository. 
and just name whatever you want okay so we'll say um, tutorial app right and then click create repository at the bottom and so like I was saying before if, you, if you're using the command prompt you can go ahead and do that um, this gives you the directions on how to do that okay like I said I like to use the GUI just because I don't have to remember any of this so why not right so I'm gonna go ahead and copy the URL right copy that address for the repository and then right here where it says initial commit message at the bottom you want to put here whatever it is that you changed right so let's say I only right now this is just the first commit but let's say in the future I change one file and it gets added on this uh, to the unstaged changes um, well let's say I just needed to add um, a new route or something right well then here in the commit message I would put um, new user route for I don't know logging out or something like that right so you just want a description on what this commit is all about okay so for the first one you can just say um, first commit all right and that's just how it's described here in the github page as well right they tell you just use first commit for the first one all right once you type in that go ahead and hit commit right here once it's done you'll you'll see all the files disappear and it'll say committed to first commit or created first commit once that's done you want to hit push and then right here you want to paste the the repository okay and then use push now I will note that using the command prompt gives you a lot of more options you can create branches you can select and uh, I mean switch between branches really fast you can do pulls there's a lot of cool things that you can do with the command prompt that's um, a little bit more handy um, but I think the GUI um, is a little bit more user-friendly so that's why I'm using it for this tutorial and so while that's loading what I want to do is go back to the command prompt and we're gonna go ahead and create an app, an app with um, Heroku okay so what you want to do is click right here it says deploy the app okay and so we're just gonna copy this um, we really don't need to copy it I can remember it you just type in Heroku create okay and that's gonna create your first Heroku app and there is our URL right so going back the next thing you want to do is this command but that's gonna be after we've completed the push so let's go ahead and check the status and you'll see there success so let's test this go ahead and hit refresh and you'll see right there um, our repository is now full with all of our files right so now we can go back and actually use this so go ahead and hit copy and make sure you're in that same directory before you do any of this go ahead and paste that and then hit and so while that's loading I want to show you a few things um, so remember that URL that get, that we got in the command prompt so we're gonna need that because um, because what you're gonna need to do is go into your passport.js file and you're gonna have to change all of these callback URLs and you're gonna have to replace whatever you were using for your test environment um, in my case localhost 8080 you're gonna have to replace that with your new Heroku website URL okay additionally you have to go in to each of those developer websites the Twitter developer the Facebook developer which you get from passport.js website right um, if you go there um, you, you, you have to set your new callback URLs right you won't need to change whatever um, consumer and client and all that stuff the um, the Google secret and all that that you use the only thing you will have to change is your callback URL right because right now if you leave this as is what's gonna happen is when you go to the Heroku um, your page that's deployed on Heroku when you click on say login with Facebook it's gonna send the users back to this page which is not gonna be valid because of course this is just a local environment right so you need to set that up okay Additionally, don't forget to go into your server file and configure your database, okay? Obviously, local uh, database isn't going to work for this, so you have to find either an online hosting service or whatever it is that you need. Um, one thing that I suggest, you can use MLab. Uh, it's a paid service, but it's free to try out. 
Um, and it lasts a good while too, I've found. Um, you can use this and it's basically an online MongoDB and it lets you configure that here and you can just host your database online, all right? So, so what you're gonna need to do is first you're gonna need to get that URL, change all of those, and then deploy your app. Um, if you deploy it now, it will work, um, but those callbacks and the database portion of it is not going to work. So I would consider, I would tell you to st uh, pause the video at this point and change those and then move on. So going back, um, you'll see now that everything is completed. So we can go ahead and open this now. So all you need to do is type in Heroku open and this will open in your default browser window. All right, there you go. And now we have a deployed app, okay? And so, like I was saying before, if you need it again, this is the URL that you're gonna have to set all your call, um, all your callback URLs to, okay? Um, and if you have any questions how to do that, just let me know in the description and I will try to help you out. All right, thank you for watching.